Hey guys, Hui Raptor here with step 12 of how to assemble the TiVo Black Widow. In this step, we will complete all electrical connections. Like I said in the previous step, it's much easier to have the electronic parts out of the control box and make the electric connections. However, it will help you to make a good wiring setup if you have the main parts in place first so that you can measure all the cable lengths required and use only what you need. So having that in mind, I will start with that and with most parts in place I will check what I need. I will start with the high voltage first, so the main board has to come out for now and also the fan. You will have a black wire and a green and yellow one. The red one will go directly to the on-off switch. From the on-off switch you have another red wire that will go to the high voltage input of the power supply. Cut the wires at the desired length. As a pro tip, I recommend you to invest in a crimp tool and buy some terminal rings for the power supply connections and some ferrules for the screw type connectors of the external MOSFET and the main board. Because this is the best way to get a good and strong electrical contact. I strongly recommend this. Ok, so grab a couple of thick wires and get a sense of the length you need. For the thick ones, you will need one from the 24 volt output of the power supply to the external MOSFET and a second one from the 24 volt output of the power supply to the main board to power it up. Connect the input and the output wires.
add the wires to power the control box, cooling fan and the exterior cooling fan. You can also add extra ones if you plan to have more 24 volt elements like more cooling fans, lights or whatever. Next, you can connect the external MOSFET. The thick cable that comes from the power supply must be connected to the big connector labeled power. Please pay attention to the positive and negative signs. The cables that come from the heat pad must be connected also in the big connector but on the side where it's labeled hot bed. On the other side you must connect cable where it's labeled bed. This one will connect to the main board in the green connector also labeled bed. And now the main board. Connect the thick power cable from the power supply to the green main power connector. Next, connect the cable from the external MOSFET. And finally, the cable for the layer fan, if you have one. I also recommend you to take the factory connected hot end heater wires out and add ferrules to them also. Put everything in place. Try to arrange the cables nicely and in a way that the airflow can reach the drivers and MOSFET.
The kit also includes a couple of LED strips to illuminate the control box. I will use just one for now and put it on the side. Remember the extra wires I installed in the power supply? They can be used to power these LEDs. And this is how my control box looks like. Since I had more polyester sleeve laying around, I decided to use some more and organize all the cables with it. For the back side, I designed these small brackets to secure the cables that come out from the control box. They are very easy to print and to install. They will keep them in place and prevent them from being pulled out. I posted them in Thingiverse, so if you're interested, you can find the link in the description. Now, let's install the heat pad. Take it out and grab the bag that contains the screws and the springs. Use the isolation washers between the heat pad and the springs. And I will add some normal washers between the springs and the carriage as well. Don't worry about the bed leveling, that will be done in the next step. Now, go ahead and connect all the cables. Make sure that they are correctly inserted.
As for the heat bed cable, I prefer to secure it here with a couple of zip ties. By doing this, I will prevent stress in the heat bed connector caused from the back and forth movement of the bed, which can cause problems in the future. And all done! Thanks for watching! We will continue in the next step.